So this is a segment of a full interview I did with Derek Hagen, who produced and stars in I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker. It's a really fun little movie on Amazon Prime. I've recommended it a few times. If you like horror movies, if you like funny movies, if you like bloody movies, uh, it, House Harker, I can't recommend it enough. Check it out. But Derek was kind enough to come on the show and really answered a lot of questions that I've always had about the movie making process about what it was like to make a movie with little to no budget, little to no experience, what it was like to submit it to festivals, what it was like to release it, the whole thing. Really cool stuff. So enjoy this excerpt, and then follow the Flick Connection podcast, support the channel. I really appreciate it, but I hope you enjoy this. The decision to just like make a feature-length film. Yeah, let's start there. Okay. Well, that was a poker game. I started at a poker game with my buddy Noel Carroll, uh, Clayton Cogswell, and Jacob Gibbons, and they they are my business partners as well. And uh, I had this wacky idea for a web series. Uh, I didn't have a name for it. I, d- I didn't know where it was going. I just knew that I wanted it to be like these these idiots, these brothers that com- com- claim they're descendants of the last vampire hunter. And um, they put on a show. They have like a museum that people go in and there's like all these little artifacts that they have from like their family. But everyone thinks it's fake. And and then um, one like one episode, like a vampire comes another episode, maybe, a you know, a werewolf and so on. It was kind of like uh, Hardy Boys meets um uh, what's that? What's that crazy movie that I, I can't even think of right now? Ah, uh, the the werewolf has nards. What's that movie called? Uh, Monster Squad. Monster Squad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 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 that kind of feel, you know, that '80s feel and stuff. And um, I so I pitched to the guys, not knowing if they would like it or anything. And then we just started talking about it and joke after joke. And Clayton was coming up with ideas. It was just making us laugh. Jacob just all of a sudden threw, oh, what if they, they were, you know, coming, what if they were like related to the Harkers, like Jonathan and Mina Harker? And we're just like, oh my God, it's funny. Like two hours passed and uh, Clayton, our, our director, uh, said, this isn't a web series. This is, this is a fucking movie. Yeah. And we got really excited and, um, and then we just kept talking about it and then decided to actually start writing a, a script um about two years two years later we had a script that we really liked and we had a meeting at this burger place and uh uh we were actually trying to figure out what our next move was because we haven't worked on anything in a while and uh we're like well are we gonna shut the doors are we gonna start working on commercials and and, and save money and then make our own stuff you know what do we want to do and then our director clayton came and he, I don't know, he had, it was really weird that night. He just, he came and he had a certain energy about him and he sits down and he's like, gentlemen, I know what we're going to do next. And, and I, and we're like, what? We're going to make a fucking movie. And we're like, what? <laughs> it's like, so you have really been thinking about House Harker. And, and I think at that time too, I actually went and visited uh, Wisconsin a few times and I sent pictures to the gang and Clayton really liked the idea of filming in Wisconsin and um, loved the different, like, like if you go to where I live, you're magically whisked back to the, like the 1980s almost, you know, where things just kind of slow down a little bit. And it's just, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's very awesome there as well. But at the same time, you know, not a lot of tech stuff there going on. It's, it's very, it, People are just, you know, keep themselves or, or a lot of families and stuff like that. But it has that like 80s feel. And I always felt like in Wisconsin, too, it was very cinematic. And I don't think a lot of people film there enough. Yeah. And so so that was so that was kind of like Clayton was saying, let's do this. And I know he didn't do this, but in my head, he stood up on a table and gave us like dead poet society speech. And it was like. We have to do this, you know, save the day. And um, we all got excited. We're like, make a movie with not having any idea how yeah. we we're going to make a movie <laughs> at this time. You know, not having a clue. You know, I think our budget started at, you know, 
two million and then just went down <laughs> to yeah. what is you know, a couple of dollars. Let's throw it at the screen and let's let's make this thing. And that's kind of really how how it sparked from from that from that time he said that. I think four months later, me and Clayton were in a car. Uh, we we drove up about a week earlier before the cast and crew, and we got there uh, right before Halloween. And, oh, wow. uh, and we, we started setting things up, working like 12, 14 hour days, doing, uh, rehearsals, uh, building sets, uh, painting walls. I had my dad and my nephew build a set for us at one time. Um, just a lot of friends and family coming out of the woodwork. You know, I was just like calling any, every favor I could. And um, even my buddy uh, Alan Cragen became a co-producer on the thing eventually just because he just did so much. He had to call the mayor at one point so we could get a shot at the courthouse. And it was just insanity how fast it went and then how many problems just kept coming up and how we had to kind of be like, well, we don't have the money. We can't write a check at this problem how do we figure it out how do we how do we do it creatively and how do we make it better how do we make it work for us and that was definitely the challenges constantly and and one of them being uh blizzards we had yeah. we went through three blizzards uh during the filming of this uh which we got there so we started filming november 4th of 2014 and uh uh, they, we were told that, that, uh, blizzards would probably get there. We're going to get hit by snow by first week of December. Yeah. That's why we went out early November. November 12th, we we're hearing rumors that we were going to get hit by a blizzard. And we did <laughs> three yeah. times. It just hit us like so hard. And I remember we had like, we had times, there was one time where we figured like, we're, we need shots outside still. We need grass on the ground. Like, but we're running out of time. We didn't know what we we're gonna do. And my my dad was like, you know, I have that. I have this huge tarp. You just throw it on the lawn, let it snow, and then pick it. You know, shovel the snow off, and then pick it up, and you have grass. I'm like, that's genius. <laughs> so I remember like two in the morning, me and my buddy uh, and my partner Noel, we go to, to my dad's garage. It's like this huge tarp, and it looks like it's it's like a dead body, you know, like wrapped up in this thing. And so I tell Noel, I said, if we're going to carry this, let's just carry it like a dead body all the way to uh, set. Because we, we stayed at my parents' house, and then set was about three blocks away. And so, like, two in the morning, we're carrying, a, like, a this looks like a dead body, like this. Yes. <laughs> and we see somebody, I'm like, oh, it has to be crew. And we get really close, and I'm like, oh, that's not crew. Some guy outside walking his dog at two in the morning, and... uh we're just walking by and he's looking at me. I'm looking at him and he's like, evening, evening. <laughs> and we just like, <laughs> it's just like, uh, I love that he didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. I'm sure he probably heard that we were doing something up. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably kind of knew what was going on, but still it was a, it was a interesting time doing that, but that's kind of how, how it got started. And then we just, went on from that that's probably a, a long well, no, 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 that's, answer that's good that's, that's what i was curious about because well, one you mentioned the snow so i'll jump ahead the uh and i, I don't want to give away any um spoilers because i do want people to go see the movie you can watch it right now on amazon prime is there anywhere else i guess like you could you could rent it on any streaming service huh no it's just amazon right now okay in the states if you you are in germany you can buy the blu-ray uh, okay uh, do have we made a deal with them? Um, Shoreline Entertainment, our sales company, and they uh, made a deal uh, with Germany and then Spain. I think you can buy the DVD. If you're in China, you can watch it on Fox <laughs> at midnight <laughs> really? once in a while. Yeah, so it's it's. Uh, but we just got started in the states, and hopefully, you know, we'll we'll have other places that you can watch it. And I think we're you know trying to get on different you know networks as, as much as possible but well i i want to talk about that but before we move on from the snow i do remember in the movie 
Uh, and again, I don't want to like spoil anything. I basically, what I try to do on the channel is I try not to say anything that you wouldn't find out from just watching the trailer. Oh, okay. but the but the thing I really liked about the sort of the climax of the movie is I do remember like snow collected on the ground throughout the last like 15 minutes or so. Yeah. And it, but it, but I remember thinking I'm like, I because I think about this stuff. This is how I watch movies. I'm like, did they have a snow machine because it collected? As I recall, fairly evenly, like it on the way the movie's edited, it uh, came, it built up over the course of that evening. The way you guys cut it together. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, we did some CGI because of that. Oh, okay. Put some in certain scenes uh, so you could see snow because in some of the first cuts, people are like really shocked <laughs> on the. I don't want to give the ending away, but. Uh, uh, at the end, how much snow, you know, uh, is there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that was, that was, uh, John Inge. He did all the visual effects and he went in there and, uh, did that for us. So, and, and it looked great. So you can't yeah. sometimes. Cause that worked out. And then I remember, so, and I'm not just gushing cause I had you on here as a guest. This is something I really, <laughs> I really noticed, like when I first was watching the movie. Cause at first, you know, I noticed it is a, I, I, you know, I watch enough movies. I notice it's a very low budget movie, but mm-hmm. I'm watching the uh, the the little stage production in the beginning where you guys are. Mm-hmm. I guess it was, if I, I mean it's been a while since I've seen it now, but uh, sure. uh, you guys are doing like a rehearsal, or maybe there was like a guest there or something. But it was there was nobody in the room, yeah. and uh-huh. there's the gag with the knife and everything. I'm like, this is edited together really well. It, like for for humor uh, purposes, and I'm always I'm still like baffled by that in any movie that's funny, and like how you can do some write something funny, film it, and then edit it with the comedic timing, and have it all have it go through those stages that are all really far apart production wise, and still have it land to me sitting on my couch, like still have that like right timing. It's always it always baffles me how oh. that's but impossible. <laughs> That has to go to um, Clayton Cogswell. He is the director, and then he was our uh, main editor. Um, so he, uh, I've edited some things on different projects that we did, but he is by far the superior editor. He's actually taught me a, a bunch of things just sitting and watching him. It's probably I got learned more from him than like any school I could have gone to. Um, so yeah, he. When he's directing, he, I don't know how he does it, you know, but it's, it's like in his head, you know, I would yeah. call him like a beautiful mind. Um, because he like, cause he'll, he'll tell us like what he's doing. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But then, and then, then he puts it all together and like, oh, well, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we just kind of trust him a lot, you know, I and mean, he's earned that trust over the yeah. years and other things that we've done. And, uh, um, so that's this, this what he does and um he's he's, and and to his credit i will i will tell this story too um because of the blizzards we had to scrap a lot of stuff and realize that we we were shooting in california so there are scenes that are seamless that that no one's ever pointed out to me that oh that's california and oh that's wisconsin like it goes back and forth yeah i didn't notice i I didn't notice that you weren't in a different in in a different place at all yeah, um, and, I, uh, and I watched it twice, and I I do I feel like I notice those things when they're not done right. But I can I can tell you that this won't give anything away. The deputies, the two mm. guys that play the mm. deputies, um, they, they were never in Wisconsin. Okay. Not okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, that's good to know. That that's a good uh, thing to share because when I go back and watch it, I was uh, I want to say they were like on the doorstep at some point. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All yeah, right. They're, That's they're pretty at, good. They're at the. Uh, they're in the the morgue yeah. scene, and then they're at the uh, the scene where they're at the uh, the courthouse. And the okay. town, the whole town is like there. And yeah. They're there, but they're not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the one guy I, that stands out to me, I guess he's the one with the mustache, unless they both had mustaches. He was really good. I remember well, him he's kind of standing out. Was That's right. Definitely in Wisconsin. Uh, Okay. The, oh, okay. But the the two guys that play the the, the deputies. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they they were not. Sorry. Yeah. That would have been really impressive. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, and I'm, I'm fuzzy on like how many times we saw him. I just remember him standing out to me. And then the uh uh okay, what is her name? Uh, Whitney Moore. How did you guys come about her? Was that just a, a standard casting thing or? 
was um that was a uh, Noel Carroll. I think he we worked for um we worked for Machinima on a few different things, and so he made. I think we just I think we he might have worked with her at one point, and yeah. then um, just was like, hey, do, do you want to audition for this? And um, I mean, I in my opinion, she got the part before she even auditioned, you know. And, and then when she auditioned, I was just like, yes, please. Yeah, well, it was like she was on camera for maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, and I'm like, oh, it's the girl from Birdemic. Yeah. And then I was like, well, sh-, you know, I was like, oh, well, it'll be one of those kind of movies. But she was good in it. She, was she, but I will say she was not good in Birdemic in the best way possible because the the direction on that was so horrific. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, that's what's so beautiful about that movie. But uh, I was surprised. I mean, she she was surprising in this one. I I, I like that. It was kind of cool to see her too because it kind of added. It was kind of a little wink and a nod, I think, to the, the type of movie you were wanting to make. You know. Yeah, yeah, and she and she was fantastic. She she killed it. I remember yeah. even seeing her first performance in Wisconsin, and I looked at Clayton. I'm like, she's she's too good for us. Like she she's just like she was just amazing. The performance she gave, and she like we're like, okay, we have to we have to get on this level. And, um, but she, she was a trooper in, in every level and she had some great stories on Bird, 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 uh, Demick. And, uh, and then just, I know she flat out said on, on her audition, she's like, you know, she saw the movie. She, she I don't want to, you know, I don't know if she wants me to say how, what she feels about it, but she did say that movie has gotten her so much work, you know? And, yeah. uh, uh, I think that's great, you know, and that's, and that's, that's what a movie should do for a working actor or anybody that works on a movie. If you can keep getting work from it, that well, and especially <laughs> on something like that, because she could have easily just been like embarrassed by that. But people love that movie. I've watched it quite a few times. I have and, too. Uh, <laughs> people, she, I mean, just lean into it. It seems like she leaned into it and did a good really job. Good. But it's not like it's it's not like she's not capable of doing a good job. So that was I thought it was cool that she was in it as well. And then didn't you tell me your mom was your yeah. Okay, so your mom was the neighbor. My mom was the crazy neighbor in the movie. Okay, cool. Because she, we made her audition. Yeah, she, um, she did a good job. I never would have suspected she was family. <laughs> yeah, she. Um, well, my my friends, my I told my my business partners, I said, hey, we should. I think I think my mom would do really good as Mavis, and they're like, and they've met my mom, and she's just a sweetheart, you know. And, uh, and they're like, no, your mom's too nice. We, you know, we need somebody that's, you know, really, that, that you want to eventually, I don't want to give it away, but you have to be angry at. And, uh, and I was like, I think I could get her mad at me if, if we put her in that. <laughs> like, I was like, I've seen different sides of my mother and, uh, uh, I, I think she can pull up. So we were at, we were doing location scouting and this was like uh, maybe two months before we actually, uh, filmed. And uh, we gave my mom, my mom, she's going to hate this, but she drank, I think she, she says she didn't drink this much, but I think she drank at least two bottles of wine and we gave her a BB gun and she did the audition and she took her teeth out and she was just wild. And I keep telling like, who has that footage? Cause I, I love to put it oh, on yeah. behind the scenes and we can't find it now. Oh, no. We recorded it. I think it was on somebody's phone too. And, uh, but we were just dying when we were laughing and, and, uh, uh, Clayton and it was, it was Clayton's decision too. I said, I, I, I didn't want to be biased or anything. So I was just like, it's your decision. You know, we'll live with whatever you decide. I think, I thought she was great and he's, he agreed and, uh, he, so she got that part on her own merit and she just killed that audition. <laughs> <laughs> she did great. She did great. Yeah, no, and she, she, she stood out in the movie. I, I was surprised when you told me that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and she was also our cook. She oh, cooked all nice. our food. Uh, her and um, our executive producer Adam Lee, who was one of our unsung heroes. Uh, you know, without him, the movie wouldn't have been made. Um, not only was he the executive producer, he was pretty much a, a PA on set. He did. He had to do so much. Um, there was times where he had to drive from Washburn to uh, Minneapolis, which is about a three and a half, four hour drive, depending on, you know, how much snow you're getting. Um, so, yeah, so he and then he also had to drive to Duluth, which is about 40 minutes away. So back and forth, picking people up, dropping things off, uh, 
we we uh, we froze a lens once, <laughs> yeah. and it, it cracked, and we had to order an, another one, which was expensive. And uh, that there was a scene where we go in in and out of, of a house, and it was getting really hot, and then we get cold, and then bam, the the lens. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Man. that was tough. Um, there was another. Seeing that we're talking about accidents, I'll, I'll keep going. <laughs> One of the the big one was um, the, the house that we were using, House Harker. That was my dad's partner's house. Her, her name's Barb Cooney. I basically make uh, what they do is they uh, buy houses and they fix it up and then they, they sell them. And uh, my dad does a lot of the fixing up stuff. Well, this was in the fixer upper stage, so we thought the house would be perfect for that. And uh, um, however, there there is a a window oh, um, in there that is, we didn't know this, um, was etch, all etched glass, beautiful etched glass. And um, I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit uh, uh, why that's so significant. Um, we we had a lot of good people work on, on the movie, not a lot of people with a lot of experience. And that being said, I'm not, you know, we weren't mad or anything. We also knew that, you know, when you're doing something like this, you don't, you don't always know what, to do, you know, and um, we had to put tarps up on the walls and stuff and on the windows. We had a gentleman who was our PA, he was a really great guy. He's in the movie too, and uh, he was he put a nail by the the window and accidentally hit the window, and it cracked yeah. you know, like that. But over a few days, it kept cracking all the way down, and we found out later on that the that the edge glass was a hundred year old <sighs> edge glass. By the way, there's about thirty frickin' windows in this house. And that's <laughs> that the one. one that one and we had to cover all the windows. That yeah. was the one that got that got cracked. And it was I think it was like I don't know. We and we, we had we paid for it, you know, we, we yeah. broke it. And so I think it was like two percent of our budget. Like, oh man, yeah, it was. It was that, that hurt. That hurt. Yeah, but but that was just that's what you, you. Those are the challenges that you're gonna do when you when you uh, go make a movie and you never made a movie and uh, um, and uh, you just have to figure it out and you have to you know be good I think on your word and stuff and, and what you're gonna do. Um, but that was challenging for sure. <laughs> so, so you go through all this, you know, you make the movie, you bootstrap it, you get it cut, it's ready to go, it's done. What do you do? What do you do at that point? What's the next move? The next move was uh, film festivals. Okay. And so that's where we started, and um, we entered every film festival that you can imagine. Uh, and Shoreline actually did that, our sales company. Okay. And, um, they they entered in any one that you can imagine, you know, we we probably entered it in. And so then we're starting to get the the rejection letters back yeah. and over and over and, and oh, uh, to, to the point, you know, it was just like we're just like we were like I don't think it's giving it giving it away, but I remember our director uh saying to me, Did we make twirl? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and, and we're like, no, I don't think so. And 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 then all of a sudden we we get a call and Shoreline said we got into a, a pretty decent film festival in Spain, Madrid, uh, called Nocturna, and they loved our film and, cool. and wanted wanted to, to put it in there. So we freaking fly to Spain, and uh, I've never been to Europe. You know, the the farthest I've gone, you know, is from California to, to Wisconsin on a plane. So is it like a 10 hour flight? We get there. It's just beautiful place, beautiful people, beautiful, amazing food. And uh, in one sense, it was just, it was just a great time being there. And then but then you're getting nervous, you know, to show your film. Like, you know, I think the day of I'm like, are they even going to like this? You know, yeah. And, and, and it was that was just nerve wracking. And then. And then we were we were following um can't remember his name. Who's the director that directed uh Werewolf uh, in London? Or American uh, Werewolf. Um, oh. God. 
put it Landis. on the spot. Um, uh, Landis, yeah. He, uh, th- there was like an anniversary thing. So we, they, they were showing that movie and then he did a, a, uh, interview, like a, so we're listening to Landis speak and then our, our movie is next. Oh <laughs> man. So, so like 400 people are there in the theater and it, it's, we, we got the midnight show, which I think is yeah. great. Oh yeah, it's perfect for your movie. Yeah. And, and so, so they, he goes off and then the, some people leave and then, but then more people coming in and it was cool to see the line of people come in and, uh, and, um, some people even recognized us, which was a trip. And, uh, uh my mom was there. People asked my mom oh, for an wow. autograph. So that was real fun. And, uh, uh, so that was, that was just a joy. And then, and then we sit down and watching the, the, the movie starts and the laughs start to trickle in and, they were just, they, they ate it up. And we were just like, yeah. oh no. So all that work that went through it, all that, that frustration and all the, you know, the, the crying in the showers, um, were <laughs> just like worth it. You know, you're just like, it was, it was, it was exactly what we wanted. It was, it was, um, it was just a great feeling. And then, and then we all of a sudden got into more film festivals and things were, were going. But I, I made a joke to my partners that said, we should, we should uh, make a trailer for the movie and put like you know Sundance, yeah. Becca, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Cans, rejected. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would have been into that. See the movie that that festivals don't want you to see. <laughs> you know, that's uh, my first, my first like we can't we can't do that. But uh that was those was just one of the jokes that we had. But once yeah, once we got into that film festival, it just seemed like all of a sudden we got on a, a roll and and then it was just like wh- wh- when do we actually release it, you know? And uh and that was finally uh for the US uh rights um was um October uh, the 13th, Friday the 13th, um, uh, for, for Amazon. And, uh, and we're still trying to get it on other platforms. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, I mean, yeah. Kind of, I mean, can you go, like, what's kind of involved in that? I mean, like, is it just a matter of submitting it and getting it to, like, someone to submit it to? And just like, like, similar to the film festival submission process or? Yes, it, it's kind of weird because in one hand, you know, when you make, when you make a movie and you have, like, a sales, rep that you're attached to you're kind of giving your movie away in a sense and and they're they're trying to get it out there more and um but at the same time i feel um that that we can still promote it and that's that's why i've kind of i've taken over like the twitter account on house harker yeah. and, and the um facebook page and i've been just just kind of reaching out to the horror community because i i don't think i realized how big it was for one yeah and how you know, no one knew the heck we were, you know, so, and so I've just been starting dialogue with people and then, and then I would leave it up to them if they wanted to like talk about the movie or see the movie and, and it's been kind of working out. <laughs> 